This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Whelan, also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Now, with the latest NASCAR local, regional, touring, and international racing news and views, here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. It's another week that we are back to racing. I'm Hannah Newhouse, joined, as always, by my co-host, Kyle Rickey. And Kyle, we're almost as close to normalcy as far as cars being on the racetrack that we've been in a long time. The Arkham Menard series returned this past weekend at Talladega as well as some others, but it's, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, and, and yeah, it's great to have cars on the racetrack. I think the next step is, and we're getting there as well, fans in the grandstands. Um, there were no fans at the ARCA race at Talladega. There were no fans at the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour race at the Jennerstown Speedway. But um, I think as, as we progress through the rest of the month of June and July and as restrictions are lifted, uh, we'll begin to see more fans in the grandstands. We saw 5,000 at the, the Cup race in Talladega, and we expect to see, uh, I think, like 30,000 at Bristol for the All-Star race in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, we're getting there. Um, and, and like you mentioned, it's nice to have some of these tours back running, uh, at least in a modified, probably condensed schedule for the rest of 2020. I was going to say, we say back on schedule, but it definitely is not the same no. schedule that we had released over the off season. Uh, the modifieds, you know, we'll talk about those a little bit later. Raced at Jennerstown this past weekend after having tried to start their season at Myrtle Beach a few weeks ago. Um, but the NASCAR Euro Series, we talked to them a couple weeks ago about when that schedule could be coming out. They, they really weren't sure at the moment of when they were going to get these restrictions lifted because they are a international, yeah. international tour. Um, yeah. being the only one that we have here in this, in the NASCAR, you know, series. Uh, so their hats off to them for being able to get out a revised schedule. Yeah. We go to Canada once a year with the NASCAR Gander trucks. They're in a different country every week in Europe and, and they did get a schedule out just over a week ago. Um, six weekends are, are tentatively scheduled five or set. They'll kick off September 12th and 13th, uh, at the Grand Prix of Italy in Rome, October 3rd and 4th, they'll go to Zolder uh, at the uh, Grand Prix of Belgium. October 17th and 18th, the Grand Prix of Germany at the Hockenheim Ring. I love that racetrack. November 14th and 15th, they have the Grand Prix of the Czech Republic at Circuit Most. And then uh, we wrap it up tentatively, December 5th and 6th, the Grand Prix of Spain in Valencia. Brands Hatch is also on the schedule, but a date has not been solidified yet. So right now, five weekends. Um scheduled six weekends I guess is the hope so um, better than nothing uh, as the NASCAR wheel and Euro series comes to life here still uh, what almost two and a half months away from now I was gonna say still quite a ways before they get to go back racing I know they were one of those series that incorporated we talked to them about eye racing yep. into the off time that we have had and I know a lot of those drivers are looking forward to uh, taking a step away from the simulator and back into a regular race car and one of those drivers uh, Julia Landauer we talked about it, I believe, at the tail end of last year. Maybe even talked to her about her plans on going NASCAR Euro racing. And if anyone follows her on social media, they know she is so ready to get back to a racetrack. Well, and she was one of the most active people that I think we know in in the industry. I mean, if she's not in a race car at a racetrack, she's off doing public speaking. I mean, she is somewhere all the time in airports, flying back across the, throughout the country. Um, and so she must have been really bored these last uh, three months or so. But, yeah, if there's anybody looking to get back, it, it is Julia. Um, she's had a, quite some diverse seasons over the last three or four years, um, going from the Virginia Short Tracks to the NASCAR Pinty Series up in Canada. Now she's going to the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series over in Europe. So um, she's going to get her, her, her frequent flyer miles, no doubt, uh, once September and October roll around. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll dial Julie up here on NASCAR Coast to Coast and talk some Euro racing here shortly. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. 
Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network, and we're now joined by Julia Landauer. Julia, first off, thanks for taking time out of your morning. We record this on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. to come, come and hang out with us here. Oh, thank you for having me. It's nice to have something on the calendar. It's been a slow few months, so this is great. That's where we just go right into that there. Kyle and I were talking about it at the beginning of the show. Hands down, you are one of the busiest people in the NASCAR industry. Maybe not so much even behind the wheel, but if you're not driving a race car or testing or doing something, you're at public speaking stuff. You're doing events. You're back and forth between New York. Uh, how have you handled these last couple months of almost forced downtime? Yeah, um, I think I'm going to keep working for a while. Like, I don't think I'm going to, like, retire early. Um, I, it's, been, it's been interesting because it was a sudden, like, stop of everything, right? Like, I was on my – I had flown to New York to get ready to fly to Belgium to go test when the travel ban got put in place. So it was, like, stopped in my tracks. And then, um, you know, I had a handful of speaking aids that just got canceled. So it was a little stressful financially, but it was also just – weird to not really be doing anything and then so much of what I do also you know with sponsorship hunting or trying to get speaking clients like it's dependent on other people and everyone was just frozen so I um you know I did a lot of like I feel like grieving I feel like all of us went through a grieving process of life being different um but then kind of got my stuff together and I've been working with the engineers in the Euro series um to just start reviewing data for all the tracks and watching videos, watching old races, in-car video, um, you know, reading, I've been painting, I've stayed, stayed working out pretty consistently in my living room, and uh, I've actually gotten quite a bit stronger during quarantine, just because you have to do body weight stuff, and that's really hard, so it's been okay, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what the next few months are like. Now, before we talk about the next few months and real race cars, uh, a lot of the folks in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series jumped on iRacing and and simulator racing. Um, Is that something that uh, you uh, have ever tried? Yeah, so I've done simulators primarily just to get visual, get visualize the racetrack before getting there. So like before we went to CTMP last year, I, I rented some time on a simulator. I've never had my own. I don't love it. I've never been big into video games and I think it's so different than in car. So um, I was kind of talking with Anthony Kumpen at the Euro series and just kind of saying, well, you know, is it worth kind of putting all the investment in to get it or should I just rent or borrow friends? Um, and we just, I, it was something I couldn't commit to, I don't think. So I'm, I'm going to be doing more of just practice, um, but I haven't done much racing on the simulator. And Anthony Coopin, your teammate there, what's the communication been like between him, even outside of the iRacing side of things? I mean, he's a longtime staple within the NASCAR Euro Series. He's turned many laps, these tracks, worked with this team. What's the communication been like uh, leading up to, you know, your first race here in two months? Yeah, we're, we've been talking like pretty much every once every week or two um, for random questions and scheduling and stuff, but then also just familiarizing. And again, I'm, I'm working with one of the engineers there and that's been really helpful just that, you know, they provide the race with a lot of data about the car that you don't see as much in the, um, you know, in the amateur NASCAR series state side. So it's really cool to kind of have that, that data approach. Um, I really like that. And it's really complements my driving style, I think. So it's been fun, um, but now I'm just itching to get, uh, you know, to get there. And our first race is set for Italy in mid-September. So there's still still some time. Um, but in the meantime, it's nice to have U.S. racing, NASCAR racing back so we can watch that and fill up our weeknights with some racing, right? 
Absolutely. Uh, Anthony Coopin, by the way, one of my favorite people in the industry, a uh, great guy and a pretty good go-kart teammate uh, when he uh, would visit GoPro Motorplex. So I'm just I, saying. I see all of his uh, Instagram stories of, you know, the go-karting because they're, they're pretty much opened up um, over there. And I'm just so jealous. And I was thinking back to like, I was telling someone a story about go-karting days and I just miss them so much. Go-karting was I think honestly, go kart is like the most fun kinds of racing. It's like low stakes, but super competitive, and and everything happens so quickly. And I just like really miss my WKA days earlier or last week. I was just missing them. And I was gonna say too, the WKA days are not gone, but they're so much. They're so much smaller now. So many people that I talk to came from quarter midgets now and outlaw karts, and I'm like, oh wait, I did pavement road course like go-karting like WKA like all then they're like oh really and so I appreciate that when we go to GoPro and that kind of stuff and you as well you get it that was some of the most fun I've ever had in my life just the karting aspect was so competitive but so much fun and especially to do that as like a kid or like you know early teenager there's so many life lessons like you know if the go-kart breaks you learn that you know life's not always fair or like there are some very colorful personalities in go-karting, especially some of those fathers, uh, you know. So just like to see, I think to get that exposure so young in such a competitive environment is super helpful. And I just, yeah, it's awesome. I miss it. So we've talked a lot about the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. However, the last time we had you on the show, we were north of the border in Canada. You were running the NASCAR Pinty Series. We were chatting at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. How did this deal come together for you where uh, you're going to run these now, what, six weekends in Europe beginning in September? Yeah, so I had been talking with someone at NASCAR who he, um, Bob Duvall, he had overseen a lot of the um, the Euro series. And this was back in K&N days. And he was just explaining the series to me. I was like, this is cool. Like, I'm going to focus on the U.S. for right now. Um, but we connected again. And, you know, I didn't have any set plans for this year. And I really liked the idea of going road course racing. And most important for me at this point was to get in really quality equipment, I think struggled with that a little bit um, over the past couple of years. So to be able to do that and to go on new tracks and um, Bob helped me connect with Anthony. And so that was like, that was really special. Um, and to, you know, talk with Anthony and to go do the driver recruitment over in December in France. Um, I have yet to drive these cars in the dry though. I've only driven them in the rain. So I'm like, kind. I, I it's hard for me to visualize what like the limit of the car is. So I feel like that's Kind of not making me anxious, but I'm just ready to go test so I know what the car does in the drive. And in comparison to a lot of other drivers who have made their, you know, embark through NASCAR, you actually have a lot of road course racing outside of karting on your resume as well before you even went the full stock car approach. Yeah, so I started in Skip Barber with like a view of let's pursue Formula Car Racing and then I did Formula BMW USA. Um, and it was when I was 15 when the age limits were a little different. Like I think you had to be 16 to race in a lot of road course Formula Car Series at that time and I wasn't. Um, and so then made the switch there. But yeah, I love road course racing. I, you know, really enjoyed when KN went to some of the road courses um, and it's different in a stock car. I mean, it's, it's super different, but it's, it's just so much fun. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm a little bummed though. They took our one oval race off of the schedule for the Euro series. Um, so we're not, I'm not going to get that one oval experience, but you know, we'll make it work. It'll be fine. Uh, logistically, how will this work for you? Will you stay over there once the season starts or are you going to be uh, racking up those air miles uh, going back and forth every two weeks or so when you guys run? Is there room in your carry-on, too? <laughs> that is a fabulous question. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not entirely sure. I The way the schedule plays out now, there are a handful of – like, usually there's two weeks in between the races, so I probably go back. But there are some tighter ones, and I might stay there. And, like, my boyfriend's parents live over there, so I might just, like, coop up and – try to learn some French a little better and be able to communicate. Um, but I'm not sure. I think I'll stay there. And, and with Anthony and the team over in Belgium, like just being able to spend some time at the shop, um, that might be good. But I'm not entirely sure yet. I don't love the international flying. Like I feel like I'm getting old and it takes a toll on my body. So I'm going to try to limit that as much as I can. But um, no, I'm just super excited. It'll be a really jam-packed fall, which is really cool. 
Now I have to ask your social media, you've been uh, very active over it, especially over the quarantine period there. And uh, you had, I think it was hashtag because race car. And that was just a thing you ran with. You were doing everyday daily things in your full race suit helmet. I think at one point you were drinking wine. You recently did yoga photos. Where did that, where did that start? Cause it's, it was very entertaining needless to say, because I cannot do a headstand, let alone with my helmet on. I will tell you that much. It is so hard with the helmet, like so much harder with the helmet on than it was um, without the helmet. Um, I don't know. It just kind of came to me and I, you know, it was just, I think I had to get in my suit to film a promotional video for like a virtual gig I was doing. And then I was just in there and I was sitting on my couch and like my feet were up like my first pose. And I was like, Ooh, as soon as Ben gets home, I'm gonna have him take a picture of this and just be like, how's your quarantine going? And people loved it. And so it was cool to think of what I could do. My apartment's kind of small, so you run out of things to do, but I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna sprinkle those posts in like for the rest of my, you know, social media career, because they were just fun. And, you know, um, I'm glad that, I'm glad that people got a nice little chuckle out of them. Hannah and mentioned- I love the dad jokes. Oh, uh, well, dad jokes. I yeah. was gonna save that to the end, because I was hoping you would have one for us. How, however, I don't know, I've never seen you give a dad joke when you're not laying on the floor, so. That's true, and they started because I, I have to do just regular physical therapy on my shoulder, and so I just get bored lying on the floor for minutes on end. So, um, ooh, ooh, dad jokes okay. on the spot. Okay, one of my favorite, okay, it's a little, I, I think it's PG. Braided, but it's um what do you call a constipated detective what no shit sherlock Ooh. i don't know if I'm i like that. that i really like it it's like one of my all-time favorites so apologies i can say another one if i'm not supposed to say that but no it's um they're fun and and what's really cool is that people send them to me now so I feel like I have my little community of like a handful of people who would just like DM me with all the jokes that they see and it's it's just really fun so again it's nice to just give people a little moment of comedic relief. For those that don't know our Jeff Spiegel our, our main announcer on our cup series broadcast is a fan of dad jokes on the queue during the commercial breaks and uh so when I hear a good one from Julia, I will immediately tweet it to Jeff. And I don't, yeah, his, his responses have been, I think he's a little embarrassed that he's being showed up. <laughs> Basically, Kyle's trying to steal your jokes for his claim to fame. It's okay, Julia. We'll no, give you it's all right. You know. Oh, I credit her. I credit her. Mm-hmm. I've been seeing it on Twitter. I guess I get some good credit. No, and it's interesting because like I don't make up mine, and I try to give credit where credit is due. But just they're so fun. And then I saw a company that was like that one of their sponsored posts was dad jokes, and I was like, ooh, maybe we need to partner here. This could be kind of cool. Um, so no, it's just it's a lot of fun, and I think everyone's trying to figure out how to be creative and you know give people a sense of community. And so if I can do that a little bit, that's great. Now, last question here for you. Again, your first race out in Europe is two, almost two months away. Do you have anything planned stateside, whether that's getting behind the wheel for a test session? Um, you know, what does the next two months hold for you in regards to potentially getting back behind the wheel? Yeah, I plan on doing quite a bit of go-karting, um, and I, I'd really like to get some of that. And in terms of cars, not so much. And, um, you know, the, the Euro cars are just are really much their, they're really much, not English, they're very much their own beast and um, like have an incredible amount of mechanical lateral grip and very, they are different from the other stuff that I've driven. So um, not so much on cars, but um, lots of go-karting and again, just videos and training and heat training now that it's so hot and just doing my runs in the afternoon and, um, you know, just fingers crossed it all works out and I fly over to Europe in a few months. Kyle, when do you do your runs? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh-huh. Julia. Well, we will let you get back to your morning again. We appreciate you jumping on here, hanging out with us. And uh, we look forward to when you get to go back to Europe because uh, I'll be giving you a phone call to make sure I can fit in that carry-on bag. Oh, yes, please. Road trip um, or air trip. But thank you for having me. Have a great rest of your week. And excited we're, we're racing again in the States. Awesome. Thank you. That's Julia Landauer, driver in the now NASCAR Euro Series. Uh, They're scheduled in just two short months. Uh, We'll be back here on NASCAR Coast to Coast with more racing that took 
place over the weekend. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Each and every week, we get the opportunity to spotlight one of NASCAR's short tracks across the country, brought to you by Whelan Engineering. And this week, we're going to go a little international. We're going to highlight Brands Hatch in West Kingston, the U.K., It's a a one-and-a-half-mile asphalt road course, and Brands Hatch has been around for a while. There's been a racetrack at Brands since 1926, when the land was first used as a grass track for bike racing. In those days, competitors ran anti-clockwise, but the direction of the circuit was switched in 1954. The heritage of Brands Hatch is vast, as many famous open-wheel drivers in the last 50 years, such as Sterling Moss, Jim Clark, Art and Senna, and Jensen Button, and countless other drivers have raced and won at Brands Hatch. Nigel Manziel scored his first Grand Prix victory there, also winning the final F1 race at Brands in 1986. Today, the most popular event at Brands Hatch is the American Speed Fest, which debuted in 2013. The event is highlighted by the UK round of the Wheel and NASCAR Euro Series race, featuring two races on the Saturday and Sunday of Speed Fest. Again, that is Brands Hatch, our weekly NASCAR Whelan track spotlight here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast. And Kyle, again, uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that does not go on runs in the middle of the day like Julia does. Uh, it has been hot here in the Carolinas the last probably week or so. I don't do humidity. Every time I seem to tell you, talk to you about weather, it's snowing in Connecticut, but I would hope it's not. <laughs> by now because I do know Stafford I have seen that they are looking to open for their first weekend here soon yeah this Friday night uh, they had a practice session last Saturday 113 race cars showed up for that practice session uh took some getting used to walking around the uh the pit area with a mask on uh part of the mandates here in Connecticut hard to do interviews uh with a mask on being uh 90 I think it was 91 degrees and like 80 percent humidity so that was a good time, but uh, like you said, uh, we'll take it, um, we'll deal with it, and as, as long as it allows us to uh, have race programs at not only Stafford, but other tracks across the Northeast up here, uh, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that for now. Yeah, absolutely. We're starting to see all of these touring schedules, as well as local racetracks. They've pretty much all been, for the most part, green-lighted to, back, to open back up to some extent, some without fans, some to certain capacities. Um, so we're getting there. I feel like we say this every single week, but we're getting there slowly but surely. And we talked about Talladega 
um, in the beginning of the show, Arca Menard series was back on track there this weekend. Um, for their first event back, we had the Arca East back a couple weeks ago, but for the Ar- the Arca Menard series was on track this past weekend. Yeah, it's been since I believe Phoenix uh, back in in the end of February, the last time the Arca Menard series raced before the shutdown. Uh, the Drew Dollar picked up the race win this past Saturday at the Talladega Super Speedway over Ryan Rebko, Brett Holmes, Riley Herbst, and Michael Self rounded out the top five. Uh, they had one yellow in the event, and that was for a scheduled mid-race break, so a very clean event for the Arkham and Arts Series teams. Uh, Michael Self, the championship leader now by 11 over Drew Dollar and 14 over Haley Vegan. The series back on track this Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern time at Pocono Raceway right here on MRN. Old Pocono, we hope the weather definitely holds up for Shh. and you will be there. Oh, will. you will be there. I'm so sorry, Kyle. It's going to be fun. It's only a four-hour drive from the house, so uh, if there are weather issues, I'm, you know, fairly close, so I don't have to worry about rebooking flights and arranging airport transportation and all that fun stuff. So, But thankfully, there's never issues uh, when it comes to weather in Pocono. Yeah, no, never, never, <laughs> never issues. There's never been rain issues the last, like, four weeks we've been racing, but uh, we talked about the Modifieds as well. They yep. have restarted their racing, what was supposed to be at Myrtle Beach, ended up at Jennerstown this past weekend. We now have White Mountain on the race schedule as well. Uh, a new addition there, but uh, glad to see them finally kick their season off at Jennerstown. Yeah, and it was on uh, the NBC Gold NASCAR track pass over the weekend for fans that were wanting to watch. The uh, Morocco Welding Wade Cole Memorial 150 presented by Dunleavy Truck and Trailer Repair. Justin Monsignor, uh, kind of the star of the show, 133 laps, and he led them all, taking the win over Craig Lutz, John McKennedy, Matt Hirschman, and Calvin Carroll. Uh, Doug Kobe debuted his new team and finished in the seventh spot after running up front for most of the race. A good car count, 33 drivers started the event. Their next race, as you mentioned, July 4th, White Mountain Motorsports Park. I believe it's going to be their first ever race there up in North Woodstock, New Hampshire. Again, New Hampshire, a little more lenient uh, right now when it comes to uh, reopening their state. And, and I believe there are going to be fans allowed at some capacity, I think it'll be 50% capacity, uh, much like Nanox Speedway Open this past weekend in New Hampshire as well. So uh, that's good news that uh, fans will be able to, uh, to watch the modified. Some confusion over the weekend, though, and I know Doug Kobe posted about it. Uh, Jennerstown ran their weekly series program on Saturday night with fans while there were no fans allowed because of the NASCAR policy on Sunday for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. So... Um, a little bit of confusion there as to to who was mandating fans and what the state's policy was versus what NASCAR's policy is. And, you know, NASCAR policy, because it is a touring event right now, they're just going to play it on the safe side and just uh, run the event for, uh, for streaming only. Yeah, definitely a lot of confusion. And I will say I commend any and all track promoters, uh, series promoters right now for dealing with what they're having to deal with, with different guidelines, like you mentioned, via state. Um, NASCAR's policies, county policies, we're seeing people go as far as town and city and county policies on what's going to happen at each of these racetracks. So um, hats off to all of them because we've got more racing going on than any other sport does right now in the country. And and that being said, the Canaan or the Arca Menard Series West also fires back up this up and coming weekend with double headers at what was Miller Sports Miller Motorsports Park, now yep. Utah Motorsports Campus. Yep, Campus. Road racing. And that's two races in one day. They used to do the doubleheader there, but I believe it was like a race on Saturday and a race on Sunday. Now it's going to be race, I guess, in the early afternoon and a race in the late afternoon with a short turnaround time. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a busy day, day, and I'm sure it's going to be, you know, warm. Um, It's going to be a long, warm day out there in Utah. Hopefully it's not a scorcher um, like it has been in the past out there. I've been to some Grand Am events at that racetrack, and – it can get pretty hot um, out there in, in Utah, so we'll see. Hopefully the forecast is in their favor, but it's going to be nice to have those teams back on track as well, and, and obviously this is going to be the first of a couple of weekends they have scheduled. Irwindale coming up in a couple of weeks as well, so we'll be good to have uh, all three of the ARCA series kind of restarting now with the East uh, this past, I guess, two weeks ago in Toledo, the ARCA Menard series this past weekend in Talladega, this week in Pocono, and then the West series is in Utah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you can watch the Arkham Menard Series West on Track Pass, NBC Track Pass. They will have coverage for both of those races. So if you've got time over Saturday, definitely check those drivers out. I know a lot of them are itching to get back on the racetrack, uh, having not really even started their season. So uh, looking forward to that. And Kyle, have fun at Pocono this weekend. Uh, it's going to be the best weather wise. I know you're excited to get back to the racetrack. Uh, that's not Stafford. Not that you don't love Stafford, but to get to a racetrack that is not Stafford. Right. It's, uh, and we got five races uh, originally planned. There are no makeup events this weekend. We have the, uh, the truck race and a cup race on Saturday an Xfinity race and a second cup race on Sunday, joining the Arca series on Friday. So that'll be fun. It'll be interesting to, to run an event there or five events there without fans can't wait, though. Uh, it's been a long time since that West Coast swing back in, in March, and uh, looking forward to finishing to get back out there. One more quick thing. Last week, uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame announced their uh, inductees for 2021, and thankfully, um, as somebody that grew up watching Mike Stefanik, glad to see Mike Stefanik as part of the 2021 Hall of Fame class. Um, I don't think there's a lot of people that understand what he did. Uh, I I think it was the year you were born in, in 97, 98, winning both the NASCAR wheel and modified tour championship and what was the NASCAR Bush North series championships in the same year, two years in a row. Um, both of those divisions at the time had 20 or more races and had 30 plus cars at every event for, for both divisions. So a very competitive time and something that uh, we don't see a whole lot of anymore. Uh, I think we've seen a couple of, Guys try to do it in the East and West uh, with Noah Gregson and, and Todd Gilliland, uh, but for Stefanik to do it successfully up here in the Northeast. Um, and those are just four of nine NASCAR championships that he won over his career. So glad to see him representing the, uh, the touring divisions of NASCAR in the Hall of Fame for next year. Uh, I'm just bummed he, he can't be here to see it, obviously, losing him in that plane incident uh, last September. Yeah, absolutely. And in, uh, in the world of social media and I, pretty much everyone I feel like in the industry was in agreement when they finally announced that it was one of those long time coming things that should have happened a couple years ago, like you'd mentioned. But to finally get that and get him in there, I know the modified world especially was was ecstatic over that. So um, we'll be cool to see that him finally inducted next year. But Kyle, we've got racing action over the weekend. Looking forward to watching it. Have fun at Pocono and all of our uh, fans and drivers, we hope you have a safe weekend, whatever racetrack you are at. And we look forward to talking to you guys next week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. You've been listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Whelan, also brought to you by Hercules Tires. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network, all rights reserved.